Hey everyone, Justin here for s, &S Archery. In today's gear video, we're gonna help you out in sighting in your new black gold dual track sight. Today's gear video, we're gonna cover all the basic setup. We'll get into sight tapes and all the adjustments that need to be made for you to be confident and dialed in for this fall. All right guys, today's video is all about the sight in process on the black gold dual track. We've had quite a few customers call in wondering what the process is. Does it vary from your traditional three five pin horizontal sights? And yes, it does. So there are some different steps that we're gonna take along the way, uh, but follow along very easy. And one thing to note, it does not matter what dual track you have. So whether it's the pro dual track, the backcountry in line, like the one I have, or the mountain light, the process is gonna be the same straight across the board. So the first thing, after we've mounted our sight up to our bow, we need to make sure our axis adjustments are correct. If you don't, as you get back further and further, you know, there's potential for your arrow to drift, especially if you're shooting uphill, downhill angles with that third axis adjustment. If you guys don't know how to do that, I'll go ahead and put a video link right here so you guys can check it out. I'm not gonna get into it on this video. We're gonna step right into the sight end process. So the first thing we need to do on this new sight just got it out of the package, mounted it up to my Hoyt, is we need to determine our default position. Unlike our horizontal sights where we started flush here on the top of the rail, we want to actually roll this all the way to the top. So what that's going to do, it's going to allow us to do the sight in process. If your setup is pretty slow, uh, you, won't, you won't actually be able to shoot from 20 to 60 if you don't roll it all the way up. And another, it's going to give us the most range on our sight tapes when we're finished. So default position all the way up. The next part of this, we're gonna step up and we're gonna shoot an arrow about seven or eight yards away. What this does is it ensures that I need to start at 20, but if I just go ahead and shoot right out of the gate, I might miss the target completely. So shoot, shoot at seven to eight yards and, and then make some small adjustments. That way you're confident when you do go back to 20 yards, you're gonna hit the target just fine. So grab an arrow, step up to seven or eight yards and we'll shoot and then make some adjustments. All right, so the first shot, a little low and about four inches right. Now, when I'm shooting this, I'm using the top pin of this setup. I'll shoot one more just to verify where I'm at. Pretty much the same spot. So I do need to move the sight over to the right and maybe up just a hair. All right, so to make an adjustment for our windage our left and right we have this allen screw here on the bottom we're just going to break that loose and we're going to slide the sight over to the right quite a ways go ahead and tighten it up and then elevation was decent so i'll go ahead and shoot again just see if i'm closer now so better might need to move it just over a little bit more. Lock it back down. And I do need to make an elevation adjustment at this point. So instead of getting the elevation with the dial, I'm going to move the scope housing up or down. So here where I'm shooting a little low, I need to move it down, crack it loose, and lower the housing just a little bit. And tighten it back up. What I'm gonna do now is actually move back to 20 yards. Pretty confident that I'm not gonna miss now that I've made some small changes. 20 yards, that's where we really want to make sure that top pin is perfect because that's where our sight tapes and all that calibration ballistics is gonna start from. It's pretty good. Same spot, maybe just a hair more to the right. Slide that side over and tighten it back down. Shoot one more here. And that looks pretty good. So we are ready to move on to the next step of this process. So what we need to do is grab a pencil and make a mark on our top indicator. All right, so in the default position, still raised all the way to the top, we're gonna mark this indicator straight across right here on the rail. All right, so the next part of this is we need to work our way back to 60 yards in order to figure out the ballistics of our arrow. Um, if you have a very small target, I'd advise to dial your sight down just a little bit, 
shoot out to 30, 40, keep dialing all the way out to 60. I've been shooting these videos and these sights for a long time, so I can kind of, I have an idea how far to dial down. Uh, but the, the whole idea here, get it to 60 yards, keep making adjustments with your dial wheel until you're hitting perfectly right in center at 60 yards. The more accurate you are, the better results you're gonna have for your sight tapes at this distance. And I'll go ahead and take a shot. Now I'm still using that top pin in the housing. It's a little low, so I need to move my scope housing down just a little bit. Down a little bit more. That one's right in it. So that little bit of left, you know, very well could have been me. Um, the key here, like I said, continue to shoot as many groups as you can before you're too tired and really stack up the perfect elevation. Left and right, I'm not too worried about because we can still adjust that. It's just the, the height or the dial of this distance that we need to get perfect. So I'm pretty close, got one arrow up above two on the bottom so i'm going to call it quits for now so we can move on to the next step like i said if you just keep shooting and get your best group figure out exactly the elevation with just the dial that's how you're going to get the best sight tape reading so we'll move on to the next step all right so now that we have a pretty consistent group at 60 yards by dialing down shooting at 60 i can go ahead and off the same pointer the same pin mark where it's at now on the rail so I had my 20 yard mark and now my 60. Now that we have determined basically our ballistic, our drop and our arrow, we can go ahead and take our sight tapes and start lining up uh, numbers from 20 to 60 and see which one is going to match up the best. So one thing I'd like to do, if you're a right-handed shooter, you wanna leave the left side numbers on, attached. Uh, that way your indicator's pointing at it. So I just usually cut right down the middle Try to leave the yardage on top. That way if you ever have to put a new one on because it comes off or something, at least you have that readout. Now we can go ahead and put it on the bow. All right, so the first thing we need to do before we put on the sight tape is we need to roll back to that default position. All the way to the top. And we're gonna take our sight tape and we're gonna put 20 yards right on the top indicator. So line it up as best you can. 20 yards corresponds to my 20 yard pin, top indicator to top pin, so I'm set. All right, so now that my sight tape is installed on my bow, top indicator, reference to the top pin, pointing at 20 yards in the default position, my ballistics are done. Uh, if I change arrow weight or the poundage of my bow, then yes, I will have to redo that process, but as far as my setup, sticking with the same arrow, I'm good to go. The next part of this is I really want to maximize my distance on my pin gap. The dual track has great features being kind of like the single pin, but having a secondary bottom pin for, you know, if an animal bounces out and you need to make that shot. So for me, I'm gonna go back to the truck. We're gonna lower that pin all the way down in the housing, and then we'll determine what distance it's gonna shoot at. Okay, so to lower that bottom pin in the housing, I've got a set screw up front that I need to crack loose. Now that I have the set screw loose, I can go reach in right here and turn the pin clockwise to lower it. And that's pretty much it. So just remember to come back and tighten up your lock screw. Now I gotta figure out where that pin's gonna shoot. So still in default position, I'm gonna start about 10 yards difference, shoot, so I'll start at 30. If I'm high, I'll just work my way back until I figure out what distance that pin actually shoots at. So 
So a little high, just take a few steps back. Still a little high. And that's pretty good. So I would say right in here somewhere. So I am standing at 35 yards. So 15 yard difference when I've lowered that bottom pin all the way down. So right at that 279, 280, somewhere right in that ballpark as far as my sight tapes, you can expect about 15 yards. There's just one more step that we need to do. Walk over here to the truck to finish up. Okay, so now that we know that the bottom pin is shooting right at 35 yards, we need to move our indicator to match up. So we're just gonna reach right here. Loosen that indicator and slide it up to 35 yards. You kind of want to hold as you tighten it. You'll see it move just a little bit. And now we are set. So top pin, 20 yards, bottom pin right at 35. As I dial out to different distances, I can shoot the bottom pin at whatever yard or the top pin at whatever yard. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up sighting in one of these black gold dual track sights. Now just remember if you have the pro dual track, the mountain light version, or this backcountry in line, the setup sight in process is gonna be the same. Also remember, do your access adjustments, very crucial. Uh, one other thing that I'm gonna to add to the video, we are done, this is fully ready to shoot from 20 to 35. I'm able to dial out, shoot off my indicators, both pins at different distances. But one thing that I like to do with the dual track is set it up to where my bottom pin and my top pin are gap down just a little bit lower, meaning I want my top pin to start at 25 yards versus 20, my bottom pin end up at 40. For me, a lot of my elk encounters have been from 20 to that 40 yard mark. Feel like that extra five yards is huge when we're talking not having to dial with the sight. So if you wanna do that, first thing you do, once you've marked your, in the default position, once you mark that 20 yard mark where that indicator is, you get out to 60, you mark that secondary mark, as you put on the sight tape, roll back to the default position, put the 25 yards right on that top indicator, then go back and lower the scope housing and get it to shoot 25, that top pin. After that, all the steps are exactly the same. Your bottom pin is gonna end, end up somewhere around 40 yards. When you do that in that sequence, it, it basically allows you to have the default position at 25 yards to start with. The, the reason we would do that instead of just lowering this down and having it start at 25 is if my sight tape ever fell off, I wouldn't know what positioning that was unless I just remembered, hey, this was initially 20. So uh, just one thing that I do on the dual tracks, you don't have to, we are technically done with the sight in process, but just one of the th those things that I like to do on my setup. So if you guys have any more questions about this video, anything else that we've done in the past, please feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, we'd be glad to help, and thanks for watching.